Okay, so what we've seen is Packer use a builder, the Amazon EBS builder, to produce an AMI for us based on a Ubuntu 18.04 pre-existing image. But all it did was create an instance and then it just closed it down again because we're not doing anything with the instance. We're not actually telling Packer to make any changes to the image. What we're going to look at now, as we can see here, is we're actually going to be looking at implementing a very simple provisioner. So provisioners are a way to enable Packer to run some kind of script such as Ansible or Shell Script or Chef or Puppet. And it will execute these scripts against the EC2 instance that it creates for you. And this gives you the opportunity to then implement, as I was saying in the beginning of this course, gets you gives you the opportunity to then implement all of the things like all of the security tools that you want in place, all the users you want in place, SSH keys, perhaps you want to install fail to ban to help prevent brute force attacks against your servers and so on and so forth. That's what a provisioner lets you do. So what we're going to do here is we're going to implement a provisioner. We're going to step through each line now and then we're going to see that provisioner in action. So just like the builders keyword, all we've done here at the top up here is we've closed off our builders. So we had a builders keyword that was a list of builders. Now we're going to create a new keyword provisioners, just a standard JSON format. And we're going to create a new list of provisioners because we can have multiple provisioners and we'll actually see an example of this shortly. And we've just got a very, very simple provisioner here. We're basically saying that the provisioner type is Ansible and we want you to find a playbook, playbook file by the name update.yaml. And then we want you to execute that against the remote EC2 instance. So Ansible will be executed on my local Linux virtual machine and it will be executed against the temporary EC2 instance that Packer creates. And then the update.yaml playbook will run on that instance and it will provision it accordingly. So let's actually have a quick look at that update.yaml file. If you don't know Ansible, then don't worry too much. All I'm effectively doing here is saying that I want to, this, this line just says I want to become the root user. And then all I'm doing here is that I'm using the apt module to access all, to say I want to update packages with the name star, which means everything. So all packages, I want them to be at the latest. Now that's the equivalence of doing apt upgrade. I'm also saying I wanted to update the cache. So that's the equivalence of saying apt update, not upgrade, but update. And that goes out and updates the package cache so that apt is aware of what packages are available. And then all I'm saying here is that the cache is valid for five minutes. So if I run this and run it again immediately, it won't re-update the cache until five minutes time, because it probably hasn't updated much. And so that actually saves a bit of time. So all this is doing is a very simple playbook to essentially just upgrade all of the packages on the system. So we're getting a slightly improved AMI now. So we're using a base Ubuntu AMI, and we're going to come out with a slightly better Ubuntu AMI because all of the packages will have been updated to the latest versions, including the kernel. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to run packer build provisioners.json. So let's go ahead and execute that. And what we're going to see is we're going to see the dynamically found image ID there. That's the the found ID AMI dash etc. That's been dynamically brought in using the code I showed you earlier. And then what it's going to do is it's now going to create an instance, wait for it to become available, and then execute our provisions against it. So I may fast forward the video just to get straight to the point because we've seen all of this before. Okay, so our instance has become available and Packer has now provisioned it with Ansible. So let's take a look at what that looks like in the output here. So we can see here it's now connected via SSH and it says provisioning with Ansible because we had our provisioner in our, in our file, didn't we? the Ansible provisioner. And so now it's what it's done is it's gone ahead and it's set up an adapter for Ansible. What that means is it's setting up an SSH server so that Ansible can get access to the EC2 instance. You don't really need to understand how that works under the hood. It's sort of like an SSH proxy server. And we can actually see the command it's executing here. So we can actually see the command the Packer is running, the Ansible command that Packer is running. It's running Ansible playbook. Uh, and then it's adding in an additional a set of variables here. So dashi defines a variable, pack a build name, uh, the build type, 
the private key file. So that tells Ansible, Ansible SSH private key file, there's your private key that you need to use to access the key. And then it's the identity, identities only, yes, um, the inventory file, so the IP address of it, and then the update.yaml, which is our playbook that we actually wrote. We actually looked at that earlier. So what we have here then is we've got the, the update our AMI, we've got the gather facts to get information, and then we can see that it's done the update system, which is the gathering all of the information about all of the packages that we have and bringing them up to date with the latest version. We can see that it was a, a successful run, so nothing, nothing failed, nothing was unreachable, so on and so forth. And then it's just gone ahead and done its normal thing, and it's produced an AMI here for us. So now if we launched an instance right now with that AMI, what we'd actually have is a much better EC2 instance versus the the image that we originally started with, which is the canonical managed AMI image, because we've actually now got everything up to date inside that image. We've got all the latest kernel, we've got all the latest packages. And then if you put that into a continuous cycle so that every night you're always producing a new version with all the latest packages, you're going to end up in a situation where your EC2 instances are going to always have the best possible versions of all of the software, all of the operating system software that's available to them, which is definitely an ideal situation to be in. So that is a very, very simple provisioner in action. That's that's what our provisioner is doing. It's just taking Ansible, giving it a playbook, and saying, here's a server, go and do your stuff. And then all of the work's then on us to then correctly configure the server using Ansible. So updating the packages, installing the software that we need, getting the users in place, and so on and so forth. That's up to us then. So Pack has done its job. It's provided us with an instance. It's provided us with a way to execute Ansible against that instance. And then it's up to you and I as administrators to then provision that system. And then once we've finished doing that, Packer will then pick up the task and finish its job of then giving us an AMI ID that we can then use to provision our EC2 instances.